Well, let's take a closer look at the refugee crisis inside Syria. The UN says there are 1.2 million internally displaced people, but the Syrian government estimates the number to be as high as 3.2 million. A large number of those refugees have gone to Al Raqqa. Most have fled fighting in Deir Ezzur, but there are also people displaced by battles in Aleppo, Idlib, and Homs. Well, for more on this, the the, the plight of refugees inside Syria. We're now joined by Claire Spurl. She's a spokeswoman for the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center, joins us live from Geneva. Thank you very much, Claire, for being on Al Jazeera. Let's talk about first what's happening in Al Raqqa right now. This city is very important uh, for the Assad government. It's a stronghold, so therefore it's very strategic for the opposition. Just how disastrous would it be for the people who sought refuge there if the opposition were to launch an assault on this city? Well, I think Al Raqqa is a perfect example of the complexity of the uh, displacement situation and the conflict indeed in Syria at the moment. What we're certainly seeing is that uh, places that were formerly seen as safe havens are in fact becoming hot spots of conflict. Um, there's this sort of dispersed nature within, within the situation. So this is really very much feeding into the cycle that we, the, the broader cycle that we're certainly seeing. So tell us about the plight of the people who, fought, who sought refuge in these safe havens, in these cities like Al Raqqa. Uh, they, there, there's conflict, of course. There's a war going on uh, around them. But when they reach these safe havens, it's also very difficult, isn't it, for them uh, to, to coexist with the people who've already been living there? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think that what IDMC monitoring has particularly noticed is that there's this, there's this uh, very complex relationship between displacement and the conflict. So an in, the influx of IDPs into these safe havens within these communities is adding incredible stress onto the host communities that are already struggling with a very limited resource base. This in itself is uh, causing tensions and, and further conflict. So what the result of that is, is that not only the incoming IDPs are forced to flee, but also the host communities themselves as well. So we're seeing this sort of snowballing effect whereby um, the numbers of both refugees and IDPs are escalating um, in line with the conflict. Mm. And tell us more, uh, Claire, about the situation, what these people are, are, are needing right now. What are they lacking? I know that there's, uh, of course, a shortage in food and so on, but what specifically do they need right now? Well, the, the, there are immense humanitarian needs for people on the ground at the moment in Syria. I mean, the, the lack of shelter is a, is a real problem. Also, the, there's a real lack of access to medical support. Um, as we're coming towards the, mi the winter months, there's a, there's a real concern that the um, lack of food and water particularly is going to affect vulnerable communities. We know that approximately half of the internally displaced people within Syria are under the age of 18. So we know that children could be particularly affected as the cold months come in. Mm. So then how can these people be helped? How can they be saved? You know, I was speaking to our correspondent Andrew just a short while ago and he was telling me that even the activists who are trying to help these people who are, are trying to provide them food or baby formula or medicines are in danger because they're targeted by the Assad forces. They're seen as being foreign infilt infiltrators. So how can they be helped? How can these refugees be helped inside Syria? Well, humanitarian access is obviously the primary concern. It's, it's imperative that, that, that we're able to negotiate access within Syria. But what the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center is particularly concerned about is the very protracted nature of this conflict, the fact that it is going on for such a long time. We only need to look at neighboring countries such as Iraq, for example, which has uh, the second highest IDP population in the world, with 2.2 million IDPs who've been displaced from various conflicts dating back to 2003. And what this tells us is, is that the longer the, the length of the conflict, uh, the harder it is to implement an appropriate response on the ground. Okay, Claire, thank you very much for speaking to us. That's Claire Sparrow, spokeswoman for the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center, live in Geneva for us. In other world news,